fields full of vegetables, the bounty of a fertile land. It's only possible when all the elements come together, sun, rain, all the right conditions to produce food for America's tables. For centuries, America's farmers provided for themselves, their neighbors, and the world. But then it all fell apart. Despite rich, fertile soil and perfect growing conditions, there was suddenly one element missing that made all the difference. Honeybees. In the late 1980s, the honeybee population was nearly decimated across North America by parasitic mites. In three years, the population of honeybees was reduced by 80% across the continent. What do honeybees have to do with these crops? Pollination. In order to bear fruit, most plants must be pollinated. What we eat, literally, we're dependent upon pollinating insects, especially honeybees, for production of fruits and vegetables, like all the different vine crops, like cantaloupe, cucumbers, squash, watermelon, pumpkins, all those. The most common form of pollination involves the transfer of pollen grains from the stamens, where they are produced, to the stigma. The stigma is the receptive surface of the pistil. Pollen tubes grow down through the pistil to the plant's ovules. The sperm migrate through these tubes to fertilize the ovules. Fertilization is necessary for production of viable seeds and the fruits which surround those seeds. Some food crops can be wind pollinated, like corn, but many require insect pollination, including melons, cucurbits, fruit trees like apples and pears, and seed crops for alfalfa and grains used to feed cattle. The value of honeybee pollination to agriculture in the United States is estimated at $14.6 billion in increased yields and superior quality. A wide range of plants require honeybee pollination, while bumblebees, some solitary bees, moths, and even some birds provide pollination, only honeybees can be managed to provide the large scale of pollination required for fruit and vegetable production. You know, you go out into a cucurbit field early in the morning, a lot of times you will see a lot of those native bees. But there's not enough to rely on, so we have to have the bees. And what we're finding is there's places people really suffer significant yield loss because they don't have the bee population they need. Our rule of thumb is, is we need a hive for every acre of cucurbit crops. Honeybees collect some pollen as a source of protein for developing bees. However, their primary task is collecting nectar from each blossom. In the process, grains of pollen are spread to the stigma of each bloom the bee visits. And it doesn't matter which part of the country you're coming from in a, in a situation like this. So yes, even a small producer will have to have bees involved in pollination. Even a small strawberry grower will have to have its uh, peach growers, apple growers will have to have honeybees involved in their, in their operation in order to produce a fruit that will go on the, out on the market. In the old days, many farmers would keep bees to produce honey for their home, and wild colonies abounded in hollow trees. But with the onslaught of parasitic mites, the face of beekeeping changed. A colony left to fend for itself was doomed. The intensive management required to keep bees drove many people away from beekeeping. Colonies in the wild quickly perished. With the demise of the honeybees came the unexpected failure of many field crops. Many farmers had unknowingly grown dependent on the hives of local beekeepers and wild colonies for the essential pollination. Unpollinated fruits and vegetables are small and misshapen. Unpollinated seed crops are barren. Today, beekeepers are working hand in hand with farmers to ensure the future of America's food supply. Migratory beekeepers are moving their hives from crop to crop to supply the much needed pollinators. These honeybees were brought to this cantaloupe field just as they were beginning to bloom and produce nectar. The production of nectar is the plant's sacrifice in order to attract pollinators. This trade-off ensures the plant will produce the seeds of future generations. Honeybees are faithful pollinators. When honeybees go out to forage for nectar, they will communicate to others the location of the most plentiful nectar source. Once a honeybee begins bringing in nectar from a certain plant, it will continue working on that type of plant until the nectar supply is depleted. 
This makes honeybees the most effective pollinator for these crops when combined with their sheer numbers. Each of these beehives may contain as many as 60,000 bees. That's why it takes only one hive to pollinate an entire acre of melons. And we're currently running about 100 acres of cantaloupes and we'll run another 100 to 125 acres of pumpkins. Uh, we've been cantaloupes commercial production. This will be the fourth year on any scale. We started out growing an acre or two a piece and used bees then as well. A uh, year or two we got a little stingy and wouldn't put very many bees, used half a hive or less per acre and uh, went ahead and upped the rates. Dr. Rutledge and the Bee Association people talked us into using more bees and we have seen yields go up corresponding to that. Bees pay. Once the job of pollination is complete, these hives can be moved to another field. The grower must be careful not to spray pesticides on the crops while the bees are foraging. If necessary to spray at all, it should be done just before dark, when most of the honeybees have returned to the hive for the night. This and other details have been spelled out in a pollination contract drawn up between the beekeeper and the vegetable grower. The pollination contract defines the responsibilities of each party and the cost to the grower for the pollination services. This beekeeper moves the hives on a small trailer. Larger migratory beekeeping operations utilize tractor trailers and move hives on pallets with a tow motor or crane. Whatever the technique, it is important that the bees be in place when the blooms open, the nectar is flowing, and the grower is in need of pollination for his valuable crop. It is up to the grower to know when the crop is preparing to bloom. The grower will contact a beekeeper well in advance to ensure that colonies are available for pollination contracts. Here, the state maintains a list of beekeepers willing to move hives for pollination. The Tennessee Beekeepers Association assists beekeepers in learning about the pollination business. The TBA website includes local beekeeping association contacts across the state so growers can find pollinators close to home. The beekeepers will attest to the fact that pollination work requires a lot of time and energy. The grower should know that it's not an easy task to go out and pick up two hives of bees and move them 35, 40 miles away and set them off at a cucumber planting and really make any money doing it if they don't charge, you know, a re reasonable amount of money to get it. So the grower should be expected to, to pay the beekeeper what it costs for the effort of packing the colony up and moving it away. If I were a grower, I'd ask for how many bees are inside the colony, what's the brood population of the colony, did it overwinter this past year, disease free, is it basically a healthy hive? Some idea of what you're paying for. Because of the relatively low nectar production of field crops, these pollination hives will produce little honey and may even have to be fed to ensure their strength while on pollination contracts. It has been many years since the introduction of parasitic mites into the honeybee population of North America. Through diligence and perseverance, dedicated beekeepers have increased the number of colonies to a level that makes pollination manageable. As the world's population grows, the need for effective pollination will also increase. Through the cooperation of universities, government, beekeeping associations, growers, and beekeepers, the future of our food supply is ensured.